Miss, the gates will be closed in a minute. Do you know where I can get some water for these? No, it's too late now. You'd better hurry. <laughs> Introduce myself. I'm the Reverend Alexander Algernon Ford, my wife, Felicia. We're related, you know. No, I didn't know. Well, we are, not closely, but in here. <coughs> Would you mind terribly if we came in? It's rather drafty out here. Oh, please do. I beg your pardon. My mind's not quite what it should be. I was taking a nap. Yes, I was reading the papers last week, uh, the Times, of course, and we came across your name in the arrivals. We wanted to come sooner, but we had business to attend to first. How long are you staying in London? My plans are quite indefinite. Why do you ask? Well, Alicia and I wondered if you and your wife, um... Anna. Anna. Oh, yes, of course. What a lovely name. Uh, now, where was I? Oh, yes, of course. We wondered if you and your wife would care to join us for dinner Saturday next. I don't see why not. I'll have to ask my wife, of course. But, of course, is she here now? No, she's visiting Highgate Cemetery. Highgate Cemetery? Yeah, her mother's grave. Oh, I am sorry. No, it happened a long time ago. She should be back by now. Your name is Ford? Yes, the same as yours. In a way. I don't quite understand. If my memory serves me right, only your mother was a Ford. Your father was unknown, so you took your mother's name. Am I correct? That's correct, but how can you tell? I know everything, dear boy. In my spare time, which is little, I do extensive research into our family background. I also do horoscopes as well. Now, you are a Pisces, aren't you? Yes, but how can you tell? I'm good at a lot of things. Your wife, Anna, is Pisces also or Virgo. Am I correct? Virgo. It isn't easy being right all the time. Do you know the Fords go back to Roman times? 98 BC, in fact. Quite a family tree, wouldn't you say? Fascinating. Have you lived in London long? A fortnight ago, we arrived from Ireland, County Cork. 
America. It's a lovely place to leave from. You being Canadian would appreciate that. Are you on holiday? Uh, no, I, I have come to reopen All Souls Church. It's been closed for ten years and I have a, a lease on Carfax Abbey next door. That's near Hampstead Heath, near Highgate Cemetery. What time will your wife be back? She should have been back an hour ago. That's strange. She's never late. An excellent thing in woman. Oscar Wilde, wasn't it? Is it? I don't remember. I use so many sayings in my profession, I lose track. Well, we really must be going. I do hope you and your wife can make dinner on Saturday next. Come, Alicia. What's the matter? Are you all right? show go today, Miss Ford. Quite nicely, as a matter of fact, thank you. I don't know how you think up all them ideas. I tried designing some dresses a few years ago. Oh, just for myself, you know. God, what a mess. I ended up by chucking the whole lot in the wastebasket. Well, it's much easier when you just have to put them on paper. Did anyone else call this afternoon? Oh, only your sister. What did she want? Oh, just the usual. Well, if she rings again, tell her I'll send her a cheque at the beginning of the month. I'll wear my gold brocade. If I'm not mistaken, Mr. Willis will be in black. I like Mr. Willis. Do you think he'd make a nice husband? Oh, yes, miss. That's what I've been thinking. Oh, what shall I tell Mr. Edwards if he calls? That I won't be free until after next weekend. It's Mr. Willis, isn't it? Now, come on, zip me up. I'm going to be late. Eight, so I'll see you in the morning, Lorna. Good night. Good night.
Yes. This is Carfax Abbey, isn't it? Yes. Is the Reverend Ford in? Is he expecting you? Yes, I'm afraid I'm a little early, about half an hour to be precise. I have an appointment with him. I'm Miss Susan Ford. Oh, of course, Miss Ford. The Reverend is expecting you. Won't you come in? I'm afraid you'll have to wait a few moments. The Reverend was expecting you at 10.30. Oh, well, I could go and get a cup of tea and come back a little later. Oh, no, please follow me. The Reverend will be with you presently. demonstrative. She confides everything to me and I explain it to others. It's a most annoying habit to strangers, but I'm so used to it I sometimes forget to explain it. You will forgive her, won't you? Too, please be seated. We're related, you know. Yes, I gathered that from your letter. Hasn't your father ever told you about me? Well, my father did mention once before he died about there being a minister in the family. But I thought he meant many generations ago. That's odd. Well, well, well. You're very pretty, my dear. Are you married? No, but I intend to be shortly. Have you made your wedding plans? Your letter has come at a most opportune time. I was going to ask... I will be delighted to officiate at your ceremony. In fact, yours can be the first wedding in my church. I've just reopened All Souls Church next door. Paul will be delighted. We must drink a toast for your happiness. Alicia, my dear, would you mind? A toast for our dear relation. Sherry or pot? Sherry, please. Of course. Now, have you and Paul known each other long? About two and a half years. And what nationality is he? English. Of Italian descent. Ah, good strong blood. You came from good strong blood at one time. I beg your pardon? Your lineage. I'm talking about your lineage, my dear. Do you know that the Fords go back 21 centuries? But each generation they get weaker and weaker until... But I talk too much. I have a habit of talking too much. Reverend Ford? Reverend Ford? 
Yes, my dear. Part of the toast. Aren't you having any sherry? We never drink wine at this hour. Religious reasons. But what's that? Tomato juice. Here's to your future, my dear. Young love, beautiful thing to behold. You know, many years ago when Alicia and I first met, well, not so many years ago, her father didn't want us to get married. But we were headstrong and wanted to have our own way. And we got it, didn't we, my dear? Are you all right? I feel sort of funny. As if... between shots. flowing through my veins. Why is it you never need as much as I do? Hand me your needle. Give me your arm. To think we have to submit to this daily ordeal in order to survive the damned daylight. Who is it? It's me, Master. Come in. How is she? She's still asleep. Hand me my robe. Not that one, you idiot, the red one. hungry. Eat. Why are you keeping me here? If you want some more food, pull this. I asked you a question. I'm not supposed to talk to you. Hit me if I talk to you. Who? The Reverend? I've got to go now. What's your name? I've got to go. Can't 
won't you tell me your name? It's Boo. Won't you help me? I can't. I need a friend. Can't you be my friend? I can't. <laughs> I must explain their behavior. I have quite a few things to explain to you. Why are you keeping me here? If you are patient, Susan, and listen to what I tell you, then perhaps you will understand. Spool, you may leave. I said leave. I told you yesterday that we were related. Well, we are related in more ways than your imagination would allow. You see, Susan, my wife and I have lived for a number of centuries. It's true, my dear. Little do you realize that the forts have, for generation upon generation, been vampires. Alicia and I have the privilege of being reborn, so to speak. Every 40 years, we return here to All Souls Church. Of course, we look different each time out of necessity, as you'll soon see. What have I got to do with this? You're a very sensible girl, as I thought yesterday when we met. And my feelings are never wrong. But what has all this got to do with me? I'm coming to that, Susan, but I don't want to frighten you. You're in a very delicate condition and very, very important to us. Us? You mean you and your wife? No, my dear, by us. I mean the whole Ford clan. I don't understand. You know, of course, that the Fords have been buried in Highgate Cemetery since 98 BC. No, I didn't know. The Fords have always been a strong clan until the last century. Unfortunately, they've been dissipating the direct line by intermarriage. You, Susan, are the only hope of saving the clan from eventual extinction. What do you mean? We want your baby. I think you're insane! Sit down! I'll finish with you! The thoughts can only exist amongst themselves. Your baby will be guided from childhood to adolescence to maturity and then immortality. There will be other men chosen by us for their strong blood complementary to ours who will sire sons and daughters by you. Perfect children for our cause. Every one of them will be godlike in appearance. We shall all continue into eternity. Say something to upset you? No. Then what is it? Nothing. You've been acting this way for days. I can't make you out. It's just your imagination. You 
hands are like ice. It's very cold outside. Do you want me to turn the heat up? No, I'm not cold. Oh, look at that moon. It's a beautiful moon. I like it when it's like that. I wish it would stay night forever. You never liked the night before. What's come over you? Will you take your bath first or shall I? That's an abrupt change. Is it? I'll take my bath first. Carfax Abbey? Yes. Uh, is Miss Susan Ford here? No. Are you sure? Yes. Was she here yesterday? Yes, and Miss Ford came here yesterday, but she left that same afternoon. Well, she hasn't returned home, and I was worried about her. Well, I'm very sorry, sir. She isn't here. Good day. Who was that, Jessie? It was a young gentleman, Reverend Ford, looking for Miss Ford. I told him she wasn't here. You instructed me that if anyone was looking for Miss Ford, she wasn't here. And I was to say she'd gone away. And I did it. Will that be all, sir? That will be all. Yes, sir. Yes. I don't like lying. 
lying, sir. I beg your pardon. I don't like lying. What do you mean? All right, girl. What do you mean? Please, sir, you're hurting my arm. Speak. I didn't see her leave the house. I think she's still here. Are you questioning my authority, you impertinent little slut? I want you out of here within one hour. Do you understand? One hour. If I'm here after that time, I'll give you a fashion that you'll never forget. Now get out of here. I'm Paul Donati. I'm afraid we haven't had the pleasure. I'm Susan's fiance. Uh, yes, of course, I'd forgotten. Well, what can I do for you? Well, Susan hadn't come home last night, and I was worried about her. The, uh, the only thing I could think of was that she came here. No, she left yesterday. Yesterday afternoon, to be exact. Do you think she would have left a note or something with one of the servants? Well, that could be possible. I didn't see her to the door. Now I'll check with my wife. Uh, may I come in? Of course, please do come. Please sit down. I'll only be a moment. Excuse me. church candlestick in the hallway. I've asked my wife, Alicia. She said that Miss Ford has left no message and that she herself saw Miss Ford to the door. I'm afraid I can be of no further service to you. If there's nothing else, I really must get back to writing my Sunday sermon. Good day, Mr. Donati. Cigarette. second floor bedroom. That one there. Are you sure? No, but I know she didn't leave the house. What do you know about the Reverend? Well, there's something wrong. I know damn well there's something wrong. I was in the front hallway. They'd gone out for a moment. I dropped my cigarettes. He came in and was moving a candlestick. There was no reflection of him in my, in my mirror. Which all ties in. What? Well, there are hardly any mirrors in the house at all. And what there are are heavily draped. Oh, my God! I don't believe it. But I saw it. I know I saw it. We've got to get her out of there.
wasn't very smart, was it? You're not a very bright girl, are you? <laughs> I gave you an hour, didn't I? You're a very naughty girl. Alicia? know the right thing to say. What? Maybe. A half hour away from you and I miss you already. Now who the hell can that be? What? That's not true. Look darling, I'll ring you right back.
Would you like some tea? No, thank you. Come now, my dear, have a cup of tea. Alicia, would you please? Why have you brought me here? That's a very long story, my dear, very long indeed, and I don't mean to go into it now. Do you know that we're related? I should certainly hope not. You're far too pretty, my dear, to make such nasty remarks. It can torch your face, leaves nasty lines here. Don't touch me. It would be far easier for all of us if you would conduct yourself in a more friendly manner. You have brought me here against my will. And unless you release me shortly, my maid, who no doubt has discovered my absence, will notify the police. Now, do I make myself clear? But without any trace of a clue, how could the London police find such a charming lady as yourself in all of London? And of course, its suburbs. Why am I here? Now you're being sensible. I have a proposition for you. If you agree to it, things should go fairly well for you. If you don't agree, you should be killed. Not much of a choice, is there? Words are nothing, my dear. Actions speak louder. Now to business. One. We are directly related to a long line of thoughts. Two. The corsage you received the other evening was sent by us to obtain a blood count. Three. I am happy to inform you it is excellent. Four. The forms are non-coagulants, which means they are leaders. Five. There is a young lady to whom we are related who very shortly is to give birth, and we need blood for transfusions. Six. We also need weekly supplies of your type of blood. Seven, you're it. Have some tea, you'll feel better. I'll leave it there in case you change your mind. I still don't understand completely. I don't want you to understand. I just want you to be comfortable in your bedroom upstairs, to eat regularly, and read or whatever and relax. If you behave yourself for a period of six months, shall we say, then perhaps we may give you immortality. I beg your pardon. I can't explain further, not at the present moment, that is. Alicia, it is time.
What is the blood pressure now? It's still too high. I can't understand it. I took the same amount of blood today as I did three days ago. I can't understand the change in pressure from time to time. We must get it down. Alicia, put on more leeches. Spool, bring them in. Tonight is the yearly meeting. We must have the sacrifice. You know what you must do. How long have you been with them? Seven years. 
you were very young. Very young? When that happened. Oh, that. Tell me how it happened. I've got to go now. Please tell me. I know someone that might be able to help you. Help? Tell me how it happened. I was pushed. Pushed? How? I had a second brother. Second? I don't understand. When my mother died, my father married again. And my second mother didn't like me very much. She hated me. And he used to beat me all the time. Who used to? My second brother. Your second mother had a son? Yes. And he used to beat me. And he pushed me. How? In front of a bus. Oh. My back was broken in four places. My mum didn't want me anymore. My dad didn't want me anymore. And then they sent me to a... To a... To a... Do you know where they are now? I never saw them again. Then... Yes? What? Um, when did you meet the Reverend Ford? Seven years ago. They took you from the home? Yes. <laughs> Would you do me a favor? Thank you. Well, would you do me a favor? Yes. It won't be easy. Nothing's easy. Help me get away from here. I can't. Please. They're very mean. I think I'll be able to help you. If you help me, I'll take you with me. Would you? Would you like that? Would you like that? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Spool. Everything will be all right. <laughs> Cross me again, Spool. <coughs> Come. Um. Uh. Um. Uh. 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 Well, we were at the edge of trouble. We must change our plans. I have no further use for Miss Candice Ford. Kill her. You mustn't cross me, Spool. You should know that by now. How are your hands? All right. I'm sorry I had to do that. But you did disobey. It's 
strange. I have no soul, yet I feel compassion. It doesn't make sense, does it? I'm truly sorry, Spool. Tonight is the conference. I'm not looking forward to it. I decided we must make new plans. A change in plans will mean unrest to us. But it must be done. Is everything prepared for the feast? Yes, Master. It must be beautiful. Use your utmost care. It will be our last one in England. You may go. Please be so kind as to let me finish. 
Very well. I know our bloodline is deteriorating. I know we are having problems with the police. I know we are on the verge of discovery by the entire world. I realise we must procreate a stronger breed of board. I realise that in order for us to survive and exist, we must make some sort of move. But to go to America? Never! <laughs> Anyone can be stopped and asked where they are going at any time of the morning. We can no longer exist under these limitations. So, I have decided that we must move to America. That we should destroy Susan Ford and her fiancé, who only this afternoon we discovered trying to help her escape. James, I want you and Robert to go with Alicia and destroy Susan Ford. I want her fiancé found unconscious next to her. Alicia, kill her with the same weapon as you did the maid. 
I want them discovered by the French windows leading out into the garden. I myself will inform the police on our departure so that they should be found together. It should look as if he has killed her. I have arranged for a chartered boat to take us to the States. It leaves at exactly 2 a.m. Until then, I bid you adieu. What about me? Take me with you. You, you can't leave me here. Please take me with you. I'd forgotten about you. We shall ask the assembly to decide. What am I bid? What am I bid for this mortal? He has asked to come with us. He has been faithful to the fort. A great help to me. Until recently. What is your answer to be? <laughs> The meeting is adjourned. My dearest darling. 
Susan. Have they gone? Yes. This is all ours. 